Hi, and welcome to this episode of John's Motorcycle Rescue and Review. Today, I am once again with two of my favorite 1100cc classic muscle cruisers from Japan. Uh, the first one here is Suzuki's 1983 GS1100L. And the GS1100 used a version of the 1100cc Suzuki motor with two valves per cylinder. This thing is just a powerhouse. It's a torque monster. Honestly, it pulls really, really hard all the way from idle to redline. I'm running a Delcovic pipe on the bike. It's been jetted for the pipe. This bike has the dual disc brakes up front. It also has air adjust front suspension, and it also has adjustable rear suspension for spring preload and rebound damping. The GS Suzuki here has a wide, comfortable seat, probably one of the most comfortable seats made for motorcycling, and it is all day comfortable. On this bike, I have put a sportier handlebar on it to give me more control, especially at lower speeds. The bike really does run and handle nicely. This motor is the same motor that's found in Suzuki's GS1100G model which is a kind of a sport touring bike that has shaft drive. And so this bike also has the shaft drive from that model. It also has their excellent shifting uh, five-speed transmission. This Suzuki has the, just a classic cruiser styling. It's very cleanly styled. Of all my vintage bikes, the interesting thing is when I take this bike out, oftentimes people will stop me and ask me about it. I don't know if it's the paint on the tank or exactly what draws people to it but I do get a lot of positive feedback when I ride this bike. And it's just a, a really nice sounding bike. I bought it as a non-runner, so this has been a project for me to kind of bring this bike back to life. But it's still a low mileage, just a, a beautiful bike. The newcomer here is Yamaha's 1982 XJ1100 Maxim. And the Maxim used just that big powerhouse 16 valve 1100cc motor out of the XS1100. And it just has usable power. It's very smooth. It has the shaft final drive. And this particular model, although it, it has a cruiser styling, it has kind of the swept back tank, the, the rounded tank, and the step seat. It has a more of a sport touring fairing on the front of it. And that has its pluses and minuses, as we'll get into in a little bit here. The XJ1100 also has the dual disc brakes up front, a big disc brake out back. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's shaft drive. It has air suspension in the front and uh, also has rebound damping in the front. And although it had the air assist in the back, I have replaced the rear shocks with progressive units. The XJ1100 also has a five-speed transmission. Well, the real question is, what are these bikes like to drive? What are they like actually out on the road? Let me grab my helmet. I'll bring my camera along. Let's find out together. Let's ride. Currently riding Suzuki's 1983 GS1100L, and this bike has one of my favorite all-time motorcycle engines. It's a big 1100cc air-cooled, two-valve per cylinder, four-cylinder, and it is just a torque monster. And not only that, this bike. It's kind of hard to convey is yes it's fast but it's the nice thing is it is not touchy on the throttle it never acts like it's working hard it just as you dial your wrist it just picks up speed and the more you dial it open the faster this thing goes but I love the fact that it's not pressuring I can drive this bike and actually use it as a cruiser and it works just fine, just kind of laid back, tooling through the countryside, not revving it out at all. 
then it can be relaxing. And then... It just picks up like crazy. 60 miles an hour, this thing has taller gearing than a lot of my other cruisers. It's only revving 3,500 RPM at 60. And it just makes for a nice kind of relaxing, it's not herky-jerky on throttle and off throttle. And so we'll hit some twisties here and check out the handling on this GS. This wider bar made all the difference in the world with the handling. So nice. Instant pickup out of the corners. Transitions are beautiful. Bike is very well planted. It's not moving around on the suspension. rockets and that's nice the handling on this bike is just it's very well planted it probably rides a little bit firmer than some of my other muscle cruisers but the trade-off is it's very stable it's very planted With this wider bar, it's also uh, quite nimble in the corners and just easy to ride. Instrumentation-wise, the Suzuki is brilliant. It's got not only a big tack and a big speedometer, it's also got a gas gauge and it has uh, the bonus feature that Suzuki put on most of its bikes, which is a gear indicator. And that's just nice. I, I like that feature. I love the sound of this bike. I'm running a Delcovic full stainless exhaust on it. And it just has such a neat sound. The Suzuki motor sounds different than uh, the motors from Kawasaki or Yamaha. And I like that. I love the way this bike sounds. I've got two 1100 Suzuki bikes and they're both running this exhaust and they just, they sound glorious. Oh yeah. Cruising along at 60, uh, this bike is very smooth. I'm only getting just a little bit of vibration through the handlebars, but it is not annoying or uh, vibey at all. Transmission-wise, this bike has one of the best transmissions uh, in motorcycling, and even compared to a lot of today's bikes, it shifts so smoothly and so precisely. It's just a revelation. And it's one thing that Suzuki did better than anybody else. One of the things that makes a Suzuki easy to live with is it is not abrupt on the throttle at all. As you dial in the throttle, it just picks up very smoothly. And so even on really tight back roads like I'm on right now, it's not difficult to ride. This particular Suzuki has the best brakes of any of my muscle cruisers. 
and I didn't even have to upgrade the lines to steel braided units. Uh, this bike just stops with authority. Uh, the brakes are very well controlled and confidence inspiring. At highway speeds, the Suzuki is really nice. I'm doing about uh, 60 miles an hour now and it's just relatively smooth. I've driven it out uh, on a faster road and it's it does smooth out nicely. Like any naked bike, uh, you do feel the wind and after a while that could be fatiguing. So if I was going to do a lot of highway work, I would definitely uh, put a windshield or a small fairing in the front, something to help uh, with the wind, but really it's not bad. Really the only I would say the only downfall on this bike is the suspension, being as sporty as it is, is a little bit on the firm side. And I have not modified this suspension, so it is stock suspension. But it is well controlled and precise, and I like those aspects of it. It's just sharper bumps tend to, you definitely feel them. But I'll be honest, right now, it's just a beautiful day. This bike is running so well, and I just want to keep riding. Really, really nice. riding Yamaha's 1982 Maxim XJ1100. First thing I'm noticing back to back with the Suzuki GS1100L is two things. One, this bike is smoother. The Suzuki is not a vibey bike at all. It's very smooth, but this bike has the edge and smoothness. Another thing I'm noticing is that it picks up and drops revs very quickly and so it feels like it has a lighter flywheel than the Suzuki does. The Suzuki doesn't seem as quick to rev when you blip the throttle. Ride-wise, this Yamaha is also a little bit more compliant than the Suzuki, uh, meaning when I hit sharp bumps, it's not as, you just don't feel them as sharply. The seat on this bike is not quite as comfortable as the seat on the Suzuki. This bike is it has four into two exhausts on it. It's custom exhaust that was on when I bought the bike. And it sounds nice. It has a little bit of an aggressive tone. Uh, it doesn't have the sweet tone of a four into one pipe. Uh, I may update that at a later point. But for now, this bike, I'm doing 60, it's revving about 4,000 RPM, and the exhaust is not obnoxious, even behind this fairing, and uh, that can be a problem on some exhausts, and on bikes with full fairings, they tend to trap the sound kind of back in with the rider, and so I'm thankful that this one isn't obnoxious. Braking-wise, I've got to use a combination of my foot brake and handbrake on this bike because it has linked brakes. And so when I activate the rear brake, it's actually activating my front left caliper and my rear brake. I'm going to stop talking about that and hit some twisties.
handling on this bike is nice, it's neutral. Transitions from side to side easily. sporting role uh, Suzuki definitely has the edge and before we hit the twisties I was talking about brakes and that's one area where when I am sport riding I am used to mainly using the front brakes and I can brake with authority and even if I'm leaned over and I really have to transition when I'm on this bike and change my thinking uh, because of those linked brakes and so I just I can't ride it in a kind of a serious sporting way uh, with the same level of confidence and, and you could even see going through that set of twisties my speed was definitely just way down on what I can confidently do on the Suzuki on a more open road where it's not as braking intensive and technical uh, this bike is actually really nice and a little bit higher speeds it's definitely a nice sport tourer but just in the all-out sporting category i would give the nod to the suzuki another area where i'm just going to have to give a nod to the suzuki right off the bat is the uh, transmission uh, the transmission in this bike is nice it shifts nicely but it is occasionally on the notchy side and with the notchiness of the transmission, it's kind of like this bike is saying, hey, uh, settle down a little bit. You just want to cruise down through. You don't need to be setting any speed records. Yeah, doing these more technical roads back to back with the Suzuki, I'm kind of struck at how the, the Suzuki just handled them so easily. And uh, I didn't really have to give a lot of thought to them. And I'm get, having to give this uh, Yamaha a little bit more forethought. This bike would probably prefer some more open roads where it's not quite as shifting intensive. It could run higher speeds and comfort. And really take advantage of the really nice wind protection that this fairing offers. bike just definitely has the advantage at the higher speeds and right now I am getting the only wind I'm getting at all is right on the top of my head uh, a little bit but other than that I'm just in a nice pocket of air I'm not overly hot surprisingly um, I don't get a lot of like trapped engine heat behind this fairing but it does an efficient job of uh, cutting through the wind and that's a really nice combination. It makes this bike nice to drive on longer trips, longer distances. And that's really where you would see this Yamaha has an advantage over the Suzuki. And a lot of that's just, you know, the fairing that's on the front. But the ride quality as well on this Yamaha is more compliant. Now I have had to upgrade the springs front and back i put progressive suspension shocks in the rear and they also put progressive suspension springs in the front and rebuilt the forks but it gives a nice uh, ride quality good control and it is a little bit more forgiving in the bumps than the suzuki but i would also say it's not quite as well planted And if I'm pleasure riding on this bike, I'm definitely going to stick to more open roads. Uh, I, would, I would love to go upstate on this bike and kind of hit some mountain roads. And if I'm on the Suzuki, I'm going to be doing uh, just kind of gravitate towards tighter roads, 
uh, some twisty back roads and enjoying it more in a sporting environment or just a lower speed environment and this Yamaha even though it's geared lower than the Suzuki it's not super touchy on the throttle and that's nice it actually makes it a little bit relaxing to drive but when you do wind it open and that engine comes on song it really starts to pull nicely this XS11 based motor is just uh, a powerhouse and a reliable unit yeah cruising down through at about 65 70 miles an hour this Yamaha is just super smooth a really nice place to be it definitely has more of a uh, touring flavor to it than the Suzuki if I had a highway commute or you know it's just doing more touring riding uh, this bike would just be the clear choice just based on the smoothness and the wind protection how easy it is very nice Right, that was fun. Man, I'm a little bit surprised by this one as well. I didn't, I had kind of forgotten how good that Suzuki works in the corners and in a sporting role and how tight everything is on it from the suspension to the brakes, uh, the transmission just shifts flawlessly and it is just a superb kind of sport standard uh, type of motorcycle. And I love the sound of it. I love everything that I want to do on that Suzuki is I can do it and I can do it very precisely. It does exactly what I want it to do. And it does it, everything I want it to do, it does with a very high degree of control, a high degree of precision. The only downside that is on the Suzuki is at times on sharp bumps, the suspension can be uh, too firm and so when you hit a sharp bump it, it can you, you definitely feel it through the chassis uh, other than that though it's it's very very well controlled uh, the Yamaha on the other hand I would say really getting on the Yamaha after this Suzuki it made me kind of realize that the Yamaha is really more of a kind of a plush touring motorcycle and, and really, it was not nearly as comfortable on the tighter back roads that I did on this review. It wasn't nearly as comfortable as the Suzuki. And that's, that's kind of a surprise to me. In reviews that I've done, comparing this Yamaha with Kawasaki CSR 1000 and Honda's CB900 Custom, the Yamaha fare, fared a little bit better in the sporting role because neither of those bikes is as sporting as the Suzuki. Areas that the Yamaha really has an advantage, I would say that the engine is smoother, uh, actually on the road, and that can be, I do have the foam grips on this, and that can kind of contribute to that feel, the smooth feel, but it does seem a little bit smoother. Really, the wind protection, that fairing is very, very good. I know it's, it's not super beautiful, and the Yamaha would actually look better uh, to my eye without the fairing but it is it's so functional it's so nice on a cold day and so nice on the highway then I, I've got on you know warmer days I have bikes without fairings that you know I can ride so for me it, it's really not an issue uh, I will leave it on this Yamaha for now so for me the advantages of the Yamaha are suspension compliance so it's more plush in the way that it rides it will probably be more long distance comfortable and more high speed comfortable due to the wind protection. For the Suzuki, the advantages are I love the sound. I, I love the transmission in this. It is world class. The styling, I think it's just a beautiful bike. I love the styling on the Suzuki. Uh, the level of control that you have. The brakes are better. It just, it really is a nice package. It's, it's a very sporting package. 
If you wanted to do touring on the Suzuki, you could add a windshield to it, and that would really kind of help its highway manners and, and you know just keep you out of the wind a little bit more on the highway. But other than that, it's just a really, really fun bike to ride. If I were going on a longer touring ride, I would definitely take the Yamaha. For most other local rides, I would probably prefer the Suzuki, especially in uh, warmer weather. Once the weather gets cold, you know, again, that Yamaha with the wind protection, that becomes a factor. So, you know, my riding season is actually going to be a little bit longer on the Yamaha. I could ride that, you know, in 40 degree weather and be perfectly comfortable. Well, I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Let me know what you think. Are you a diehard Yamaha XJ1100 fan, XS1100 fan? You know, I I understand the appeal. It's got that monster motor. It's got just, it's super smooth and it's a comfortable bike and it's a nice riding bike. And man, as a, a touring bike, kind of a vintage touring bike, it's really fun. It's not as, you know, touring oriented as a Goldwing. It definitely has you know, more sporting flavor than it, like an older Goldwing. And so I kind of like that. I like the big air-cooled four-cylinder, the sportiness and that power that goes with them. If you're a diehard Suzuki fan and you just love the GS bikes, I get that as well. I've got several of them and man, it's one of my favorite motorcycle engines of all time. Uh, just very robust. I've, I've had probably 20 different GS bikes over the years and you know, they have some, you know, standard issues to them, but really the, the engine and transmission are just a very solid package. You know, they've never given me any trouble. I hope you found this video entertaining and informative. And until next time, enjoy the ride.